In today's video, we'll be reviewing the 2022 Norco Bigfoot 1, 2, and 3, comparing them and seeing if it's really worth forking out that extra bit of money. So like I said in this video, we will be reviewing the Bigfoot 3, 2, and 1 with the exclusion of the Bigfoot 1 with suspension, mostly because, well, I couldn't get my hands on it, but eh, what kind of a weenie needs suspension on a fat bike? And now that I've made about 80% of you guys hate me, we'll first start off with the similarities between the bikes. Which first and most importantly is that all the frames are going to be identical. They're all aluminum and the geometry is going to remain the same. So essentially what I'm saying is doesn't matter what level of bike you buy, they're all going to feel the exact same same. The only thing being upgraded is components when you pay a little more. But we'll get to the components in a second. The other similarity between all these bikes is they're all 27 and a half inch rims, which is pretty much the standard size for fat bikes nowadays. And coming from riding an older 26 inch fat bike, I'd have to say these bikes felt fantastic. Not only because of the bigger wheels, but also because of the modern geometry. Which, if you're a little geometry nerd and want to dive into all that, I'll provide a link to 99 Spokes, which is essentially the best website there is for comparing bikes, and that'll be in the description. But back to what I was saying, the wheels and the geometry were two very welcome changes that honestly surprised me how much it changed the whole ride quality. But now we'll actually start to get into some of the differences between the bikes, starting with the pricing. You'll now be able to find all these bikes on sale, but originally the MSRP was respectively 3,000, 2,500, and two grand. So you're probably wondering, what is the best bang for your buck? But before we can even get into that, we have to talk about what are actually the differences. Starting with what a lot of people would find a huge deal, and I personally find kind of useless, but the lack of a dropper post in the Bigfoot 3. That's right, you heard me correctly. The Bigfoot 3 doesn't come with any kind of dropper post, whereas the Bigfoot 2 comes with a Trans X, and the Bigfoot 1 comes with an X Fusion. So if that is a big deal to you, it's almost certainly worth getting the upgrade to the Bigfoot 2, because there's also the huge improvement of brakes. The Bigfoot 3 comes with Tektro mechanical disc brakes, whereas the 2 and the 1 both come with levels. So again, a huge improvement from the Bigfoot 3, but something that the 2 or the 3 doesn't have is a carbon front fork. Not only is this going to make your fat bike a little bit lighter, but it's also going to make it a more comfortable ride because carbon fiber absorbs a lot of those vibrations a lot better than aluminum would. A quick thing too is that the Bigfoot 3 and 2 both come with the generic Norco VP lock-on grips and I hate them. Not only do your hands move around a little bit, but they're just very hard. So the Bigfoot 1 having death grip is a much welcome addition. And the last major difference with these three bikes would be found in the drivetrain. Almost every single component in the drivetrain is upgraded from the 3 to the 2 and the 2 to the 1, but the most notable change is that while the 3 and the 2 both have a Dior shifter and Dior derailleur, the Bigfoot 1 comes with an SLX shifter and an XT derailleur. And then aside from the Bigfoot 1 not having mounts on the front fork because it's carbon and the 2 and the 3 do have it, that is really every single difference. So now we'll circle back to the beginning question, which what is the best bang for your buck? And I've kind of always hated this question because a better, more fitting question is what kind of a rider are you? If you're going to be riding your fat bike once or twice a year because there's no hockey on TV, then no, you certainly shouldn't get the Bigfoot 1. Save a bit of money and get the 3 because it is a fun ride, but you just don't need that extra bit. Then of course there is the flip side, and if you're going out all the time, then you better get a good high quality bike. But personally, I'd have to say the Bigfoot 1 is the best bike by far for the price because not only are you getting that carbon front fork, but your drivetrain is also getting a pretty big step up, which down the road you're going to thank yourself because you're not going to have as many issues and the bike itself is just going to feel better. So a super rough guideline I'll give you guys is yes, if you're only going out a little bit, get that Bigfoot 3, but if you're going to be doing it a little more frequently and see yourself getting into it, I definitely opt for the 2 or 1 just solely for the brakes. It makes the ride quality so much better. So the last thing I'll talk about are the things that I didn't like on the bikes and to be honest there was not a lot they're pretty sweet bikes the only thing that I could really think of are the tires all three of them come with the V tire snow avalanche in my mind just a bit of a cheaper tire but they'll be totally fine for most riders and they are even studdable so I don't have too much to complain about but if I personally bought the bikes I would get better tires but with that that's my review of the 2022 Norco Bigfoot lineup as you probably noticed from the videos I didn't actually 
ride the Bigfoot One aside from a little in the store. So take it with a grain of salt what I said about that bike specifically, but I could make my best guesses with the components it has. So if you are interested in taking a look at these bikes and are in the Edmonton area, feel free to go into Mud, Sweat and Gears, as well as Hinton or Jasper, you can go into Vicious Cycle and Snow. But that is everything I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.